Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. Be one. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. Our life is what our thoughts make it. If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. The best revenge is to not be like your enemy. It is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. The soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Accept the things to which fate binds you, and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. The object of life is not to be on the side of the majority, but to escape finding oneself in the ranks of the insane. Look within, within is the fountain of good, and it will ever bubble up if you ever dig. Dwell in the beauty of life, watch the stars, and see yourself running with them. To live happily, is an inward power of the soul. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself in your way of thinking. Loss is nothing else but change, and change is nature's delight. Do every act of your life as though it were the very last act of your life. The only wealth which you will keep forever is the wealth you have given away. Confine yourself to the present. The universe is change. Our life is what our thoughts make it. Reject your sense of injury and the injury itself disappears. It is time you realized that you have something in you more powerful and miraculous than the things that affect you and make you dance like a puppet.
how much more grievous are the consequences of anger than the causes of it. The best way to avenge yourself is to not be like the one who wronged you. Whenever you are about to find fault with someone, ask yourself the following question. What fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I am about to criticize? Remember that very little is needed to make a happy life. He who lives in harmony with himself, lives in harmony with the universe. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control, and some things are not. The wise man is neither raised up by prosperity nor cast down by adversity, for always he has striven to rely predominantly on himself and to derive all joy from himself. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. The mind that is anxious about future events is miserable. Difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. Freedom is not the right to live as we please but the right to find out how we ought to live in order to fulfill our potential. He who is not a good servant will not be a good master. No man is free who is not master of himself. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. No one can be free who is a slave to their own desires. It is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. A gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. The goal of life is living in agreement with nature. I cannot teach anybody anything. I can only make them think. There is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power of our will. To be calm is the highest achievement of self. Let us not look back in anger nor forward in fear, but around in awareness. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. Nothing is more honorable than a grateful heart. The whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. The art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. 
We must make the best of those things that are in our power and take the rest as nature gives it. The wise man is he who knows the relative value of things. To be angry is to yield to the influence of one's assailant. If you really want to escape the things that harass you, what you are needing is not to be in a different place, but to be a different person. The object of life is not to be on the side of the majority, but to escape finding oneself in the ranks of the insane. All cruelty springs from weakness. Let us train our minds to desire what the situation demands. We are not given a good life or a bad life. We are given a life. It is up to us to make it good or bad. The fragile wants tranquility. The anti-fragile grows from disorder and the robust doesn't care too much. What we do in life echoes in eternity. No one can harm you without your consent. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. The greatest obstacle to living is expectancy, which hangs upon tomorrow and loses today. The only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. Don't let your reflection on the whole sweep of life crush you. Don't fill your mind with all the bad things that might still happen. Stay focused on the present situation and ask yourself why it is so unbearable and can't be survived. We are more often frightened than hurt and we suffer more in imagination than in reality. The things you think about determine the quality of your mind. He who is brave is free. If one does not know to which port one is sailing, no wind is favorable. It doesn't matter what you bear, but how you bear it. The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. What progress, you ask, have I made? I have begun to be a friend to myself. The more we value things outside our control, the less control we have. We should not moor a ship with one anchor or our life with one hope. We are not given control over everything that happens to us, but we do have control over how we respond. It is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. The power of philosophy lies in its ability to help us live with uncertainty, not to remove it. The two most powerful warriors are patience and time. Happiness is not something ready-made. It comes from your own actions. It is not the man who has too little, 
but the man who craves more that is poor. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. The mind is everything. What you think, you become. To live a good life, we need to stop trying to become someone else and start being ourselves. The greatest glory in living lies not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. A man's worth is no greater than his ambitions. The secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. It is not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that they are difficult. He who is not a good servant will not be a good master. The things you think about determine the quality of your mind. Freedom is not the right to live as we please, but the right to find out how we ought to live in order to fulfill our potential. It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor. We should not be upset that others hide the truth from us when we hide it so often from ourselves. A true king is one who thinks of the welfare of his subjects before his own interests. Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. The goal of life is living in agreement with nature. We suffer more in imagination than in reality. Difficulties are things that show a person what they are. When some things go wrong, take a moment to be thankful for the things still going right. The true test of a person's character is not how they behave when everything is going well, but how they behave when things are going badly. The only way to deal with fear is to face it head on. The whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. Happiness is not the absence of problems. It's the ability to deal with them. We are not given control over everything that happens to us, but we do have control over how we respond. Nothing is more honorable than a grateful heart. The mind that is anxious about future events is miserable. The whole world is full of fools, and he who would not see it should live alone and smash his mirror. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. What you do daily is what defines you. Adversity is an opportunity for growth. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose 
one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. You have the power to choose your response. We can't control the wind, but we can adjust our sails. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. The wise man is he who knows the relative value of things. If you really want to escape the things that harass you, what you're needing is not to be in a different place, but to be a different person. Let us not look back in anger, nor forward in fear, but around in awareness. Perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. The best revenge is massive success. The more you know yourself, the less you are willing to compromise. Everything that happens is either endurable or not. If it's endurable, then endure it. Stop complaining. If it's unendurable, then stop complaining. Your destruction will mean its end as well. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. The greatest way to live with honor in this world is to be what we pretend to be. Happiness depends upon ourselves. Quality is not an act. It is a habit. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. Happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control, and some things are not. Anxiety is the dizziness of freedom. The greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. The only way to get rid of fear of doing something is to go out and do it. The greatest obstacle to living is expectancy, which hangs upon tomorrow and loses today. You don't have to control your thoughts. You just have to stop letting them control you. Anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but only empties today of its strength. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. Anxiety is the handmaiden of creativity. If you want to conquer the anxiety of life, live in the moment, live in the breath. You are not your thoughts, you are the awareness behind your thoughts. I promise you 
Nothing is as chaotic as it seems. Nothing is worth diminishing your health. Nothing is worth poisoning yourself into stress, anxiety, and fear. The greatest glory in living lies not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. Anxiety is a thin stream of fear trickling through the mind. If encouraged, it cuts a channel into which all other thoughts are drained. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. I am an old man and have known a great many troubles, but most of them never happened. Anxiety is the interest paid on trouble before it falls due. Our anxiety does not come from thinking about the future, but from wanting to control it. When you're feeling anxious, remember that you're still alive. The feeling won't kill you. It may be unpleasant, but you'll be okay. The greatest discovery of my generation is that a human being can alter his life by altering his attitudes. Anxiety is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but doesn't get you very far. The reason we struggle with insecurity is because we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. Anxiety is the rust of life, destroying its brightness and weakening its power. The more you know yourself, the less you'll be afraid. Anxiety is love's greatest killer. It makes others feel as you might when a drowning man holds on to you. You want to save him, but you know he will strangle you with his panic. Nothing diminishes anxiety faster than action. Anxiety is a feeling of unease, such as a worry or fear that can be mild or severe. Everyone has feelings of anxiety at some point in their life. I am not afraid of storms, for I am learning how to sail my ship. Anxiety is the price we pay for imagination. Remember that very little is needed to make a happy life. Anxiety is a signal that we have been living our lives in a way that is not sustainable for us. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. The whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. He who indulges in empty fears earns himself real fears. We should not like sheep follow the herd of creatures in front of us making our way where others go, not where we ought to go.
true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient for he that is so wants nothing. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. All cruelty springs from weakness. Begin at once to live and count each separate day as a separate life. Throw me to the wolves and I will return leading the pack. As is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is, but how good it is, is what matters. They lose the day in expectation of the night, and the night in fear of the dawn. Difficulty strengthen the mind, as labor does the body. Every night before going to sleep, we must ask ourselves, what weakness did I overcome today? What virtue did I acquire? Man is affected not by events, but by the view he takes of them. Time heals what reason cannot. If a man knows not to which port he sails, no wind is favorable. It is the power of the mind to be unconquerable. It is better to conquer our grief than to deceive it. He who is brave is free. Associate with people who are likely to improve you. As long as you live, keep learning how to live. Leisure without books is death, and burial of a man alive. We learn not in school, but in life. There is no genius without a touch of madness. While we wait for life, life passes. Fire tests gold, suffering tests brave men. Withdrawn to yourself as far as you can. Associate with those who will make a better man of you. Welcome those whom you yourself can improve. The process is mutual, for men learn while they teach. It is a rough road that leads to the heights of greatness. To be everywhere is to be nowhere. Gold 
contest with fire. Woman with gold. Man with woman. The difficulty comes from our lack of confidence. What progress, you ask, have I made? I have begun to be a friend to myself. Brave men rejoice in adversity, just as the brave soldiers triumph in war. Each day, acquire something that will fortify you against poverty, against death, indeed against other misfortunes as well. And after you have run over many thoughts, select one to be thoroughly digested that day. It is a great thing to know the season for speech, the season for silence. While we are postponing, life speeds by. One hand washes the other. I will storm the gods and shake the universe. Remember that all we have is on loan from fortune, which can reclaim it without our permission, indeed without even advance notice. Thus, we should love all our dear ones, but always with the thought that we have no promise that we may keep them forever. Nay, no promise that we even may keep them for long. Hurry up and live. The more a mind takes in, the more it expands. There is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power of our will. What upsets people is not things themselves, but their judgment about these things. If a person doesn't know to which port they sail, no wind is favorable. Were you to live 3,000 years or even 30,000, Remember that the sole life which a man can lose is that which he is living at the moment. He can have no other life than the one he loses, for the passing minute is every man's equal possession, but what he has once gone by is not ours. Man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxieties about real problems. What is the point of dragging up sufferings that are over, of being miserable now because you were miserable then? It is impossible that happiness and yearning for what is not present should ever be united. When I see an anxious person, I ask myself, what do they want? For if a person wasn't wanting something outside of their own control, why would they be stricken by anxiety? Today I escaped anxiety, or no, 
I discarded it because it was within me in my own perceptions, not outside. We are often more frightened than hurt and we suffer more from imagination than from reality. Two elements must therefore be rooted out once for all, the fear of future suffering and the recollection of past suffering, since the later no longer concerns me and the former concerns me not yet. The whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient. For he that is so wants nothing. We should always be asking ourselves, is this something that is or is not in my control? Make the best use of what is in your power and take the rest as it happens. It's ruinous for the soul to be anxious about the future and miserable in advance of misery, engulfed by anxiety that the things it desires might remain its own until the very end. For such a soul will never be at rest. By longing for things to come, it will lose the ability to enjoy present things. Set aside a certain number of days, during which you shall be content, with the scantiest and cheapest fare, with coarse and rough dress, saying to yourself the while, is this the condition that I feared? If then it's not that the things you pursue or avoid are coming at you, but rather that you and a sense are seeking them out, or at least try to keep your judgment of them steady, and they too will remain calm, and you won't be seen chasing after or fleeing from them. Leave the past behind. Let the grand design take care of the future, and instead only rightly guide the present to reverence and justice. Reverence so that you'll love what you've been allotted, for nature brought you both to each other. Justice so that you'll speak the truth freely and without evasion, and so that you'll act only as the law and value of things require. Frame your thoughts like this. You are an old person. You won't let yourself be enslaved by this any longer. No longer pulled like a puppet by every impulse. And you'll stop complaining about your present fortune or dreading the future. A gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Difficulties strengthen the mind, as labor the body. How long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself?
If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. Let us prepare our minds as if we'd come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. Let us balance life's books each day. The one who puts the finishing touches on their life each day is never short of time. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. You should live in such a way that there is nothing which you could not as easily tell your enemy as keep to yourself. Never let the future disturb you. You will meet it, if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. Make the mind tougher by exposing it to adversity. We should live with the conviction. I wasn't born for one particular corner. The whole world's my home country. Be tolerant with others and strict with yourself. Sometimes, even to live is an act of courage. When someone is properly grounded in life, they shouldn't have to look outside themselves for approval. your life only if it ruins your character. Otherwise, it cannot harm you, inside or out. No man is free who is not master of himself. Be silent for the most part, or if you speak, say only what is necessary, and in a few words. It does not matter what you bear, but how you bear it. Learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference. If it is endurable, then endure it. Stop complaining. Pain is neither intolerable nor everlasting. If you bear in mind that it has limits, and if you add nothing to it in imagination. To bear trials with a calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. A man is as unhappy as he has convinced himself he is. The 
mind that is anxious about future events is miserable. You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. Death smiles at us all, but all a man can do is smile back. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. While we wait for life, life passes. First say to yourself, what would you be? And then do what you have to do. The fool, with all his other faults, has this also. He is always getting ready to live. Whatever can happen anytime can happen today. You have power over your mind, not external events. Realize this and you will have strength. At dawn, when you have trouble getting out of bed, tell yourself, I have to go to work. As a human being, what do I have to complain of if I'm going to do what I was born for? the things I was brought into the world to do? Or is this what I was created for, to huddle under the blankets and stay warm? It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. Life is very short and anxious for those who forget the past, neglect the present, and fear the future. How long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself? How does it help to make troubles heavier by bemoaning them? Learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference. A gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. If you seek tranquility, do less, or do what's essential. Do less, better, because most of what we do or say is not essential. If you can eliminate it, you'll have more tranquility. But to eliminate the necessary actions, we need to eliminate unnecessary assumptions as well. The chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals not under my control and which have to do with the choice I actually control. Where then do I look for good and evil. 
not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own. We should always be asking ourselves, is this something that is or is not in my control? The universe is change. Our life is what our thoughts make it. He who fears death will never do anything worth of a man who is alive. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. Begin at once to live and count each separate day as a separate life. Let us prepare our minds as if we'd come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. Let us balance life's books each day. The one who puts the finishing touches on their life each day is never short of time. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. The greatest blessings of mankind are within us and within our reach. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. You are scared of dying, and tell me, is the kind of life you lead really any different than being dead? When someone is properly grounded in life, they shouldn't have to look outside themselves for approval. While we wait for life, life passes. Now is the time to get serious about living your ideals. How long can you afford to put off who you really want to be? Your nobler self cannot wait any longer. Put your principles into practice now. Stop the excuses and the procrastination. This is your life. Decide to be extraordinary and do what you need to do now. Life is very short and anxious for those who forget the past, neglect the present, and fear the future. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient for he that is so wants nothing. Progress is not achieved by luck or accident, but by working on yourself daily.
Man conquers the world by conquering himself. Better to trip with the feet than with the tongue. By silence, I hear other men's imperfections and conceal my own. We will train both soul and body when we accustom ourselves to cold, heat, thirst, hunger, scarcity of food, hardness of bed, abstaining from pleasures and enduring pains. Only by exhibiting actions in harmony with the sound words which he has received will anyone be helped by philosophy. Speak briefly and to the point. All have the gift of speech but few are possessed of wisdom. The best way to keep good acts in memory is to refresh them with new. Ignorant men differ from beasts only in their figure. That's why philosophers warn us not to be satisfied with mere learning, but to add practice and then training. For as time passes, we forget what we learned and end up doing the opposite, and hold opinions the opposite of what we should. No great thing is created suddenly any more than a bunch of grapes or a fig. If you tell me that you desire a fig, I answer, there must be time. Let it first blossom, then bear fruit, then ripen. You live as if it were destined to live forever. No thought of your frailty ever enters your head. Of how much time has already gone by you take no heed. You squander time as if you drew from a full and abundant supply. Though all the while, the day which you bestow on some person or thing is perhaps your last. If you are pained by an external thing, it is not the thing that disturbs you, but your own judgment of it and it is in your power to wipe out this judgment now. Books are the training weights of the mind. They are very helpful, but it would be a bad mistake to suppose that one has made progress simply by having internalized their contents. Difficulties strengthen the mind, as labor does the body. If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. Until we have begun to go without them, we fail to realize how unnecessary many things are. We've been using them not because we needed them, but because we had them. Remember, it is not enough to be hit or insulted to be harmed. 
you must believe that you are being harmed. If someone succeeds in provoking you, realize that your mind is complicit in the provocation, which is why it is essential that we not respond impulsively to impressions. Take a moment before reacting and you will find it easier to maintain control. Nothing is burdensome if taken lightly, and nothing need arouse one's irritation so long as one doesn't make it bigger than it is by getting irritated. What really frightens and dismays us is not external events themselves, but the way which we think about them. It is not things that disturb us, but our interpretation of their significance. Think of your many years of procrastination, how the gods have repeatedly granted you further periods of grace of which you have taken no advantage. It is time now to realize the nature of the universe to which you belong, and of that controlling power whose offspring you are, and to understand that your time has a limit set to it. Use it, then to advance your enlightenment, or it will be gone, and never in your power again. Remember to always act as if you were at a symposium. When the food or drink comes around, reach out and take some politely. If it passes you by, don't try pulling back. And if it has not reached you yet, don't let your desire run ahead of you. Be patient until your turn comes. Adopt a similar attitude with regard to children, wife, wealth, and status, and in time, you will be entitled to dine with the gods. Go further and decline these goods, even when they are on offer, and you will have a share in the gods' power as well as their company. That is how Diogenes, Heraclides, and philosophers like them came to be called and considered divine. Remember two things. One, that everything has always been the same and keeps recurring. And it makes no difference whether you see the same things recur in a hundred years or two hundred, or in an infinite period. Two, that the longest lived and those who will die soonest lose the same thing. The present is all that they can give up. Since that is all you have and what you do not have, you cannot lose. Nothing to my way of thinking is better proof of a well-ordered mind than a man's ability to stop just where he is and pass some time in his own company. Stop wandering about. You aren't likely to read your own notebooks, or ancient histories, or the anthologies you've collected to enjoy in your old age. Get busy with life's purpose. Toss aside empty hopes. Give active in your own rescue, if you care for yourself at all, and do it while you can. Remember that all you have is on loan from fortune, which can reclaim it without our permission, indeed, without even advance notice. Thus, we should love all our dear ones, but always with the thought that we have no promise that we may keep them forever. Nay, no promise even that we may keep them for long. In your actions, don't procrastinate. In your conversations, don't confuse. In your thoughts, 
don't wander. In your soul, don't be passive aggressive. In your life, don't be all about business. Philosophy does not promise to secure anything external for man. Otherwise, it would be admitting something that lies beyond its super proper subject matter. For as the material of the carpenter is wood, and that of statuary bronze, so the subject matter of the art of living is each person's own life. The tranquility that comes when you stop caring what they say or think or do, only what you do.